Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by Tistitutes.com. Today I'm going to show you how to create pop art in the style of Andy Warhol in Adobe Photoshop. I will be demonstrating a bunch of tools and techniques in Photoshop to achieve the effect you see here, which I hope proves helpful not just for this project, but for more creative projects you have in future. For this tutorial, I will be focusing on Andy Warhol's famous Flower for Tacoma Dome. If you're not familiar with this iconic image, there is a link in the description. So let's take a quick look at what we are going to create in this tutorial. Here we have five images featuring Andy Warhol's classic style. The four smaller examples here to the right are actually a direct copy and paste of the red and black version here to the left. To get the different color effects, I simply change the color properties on each layer to get a different effect. I'll be touching on this a little later. So let's quickly take a look at the layers. It's going to pull up my layers panel here and we can see that each one of these images is contained within a folder. And we're just going to zoom in onto the red flower here. I'm just going to drop down the, the group here and we can see that this actually only consists of three layers. We've got the stroke, we've got the flower itself and the background. So it's all actually quite simple to do. But you may be asking yourself, how did I create this flower texture? Well, also in this video tutorial, I will be showing you how to take a picture, be it in this example, a flower, and with a little work, we can create the right texture, which will be perfect for our Andy Warhol style. And once we've created our flower artwork, I will then explain how to really quickly and easily manage the layers and use a few tools in order to change the colors and create this classic Warhol poster effect like you see here. So let's get started and we are going to create this red on black version here with the white stroke on top. So we're going to start by creating a new canvas. So I'm going to press Command N, which is a shortcut for new document. And we're going to make it 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, a nice, nice big square. And we're going to make the resolution 300. Now we're going to make it 300 because we're going to be making a bitmap image quite soon. And we want to keep it nice and crisp and clean. So we end up with a nice clear piece of artwork later on. So next I want to bring in my image. So I'm just going to come to my flower example. And you may get your image from somewhere else, but I'm using this image of a flower which I got off a royalty-free web website. So here we go. I'm just going to bring that in. And I just want to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to press Command T. And to bring up Free Transform. I'm going to press Shift Alt. And holding Shift and Alt, I'm going to grab one of the corner nodes and just scale it up nice. Scale it up to something I'll be happy with. And that looks pretty good to me. And next I'm going to have to cut this flower out. And to do this I'm going to show you a quick little technique uh, that I use. For this I'm actually going to use the pen tool. So I'm going to come to my menu and select the pen tool. And the pen tool works as just like it does in Illustrator. So I'm going to quickly start to draw some nodes around the flower. And once you've gone all the way around your flower, we're going to come back over to the menu, click and hold on the pen tool. We're going to actually select our convert anchor point tool because we just laid down a bunch of nodes using the pen tool and now we're going to edit them. So by clicking on your line, you can see that we can see all the points. I'm going to start with this petal here and I'm going to click and pull, click and drag a little bit on the node and you'll see that we can pull out some anchor points. And when we do that, we'll have a, a left and a right anchor point, and then we can further change or pull these out further to add some curves to our lines. And this can be very, very flexible. So we're going to work our way around the flower and just pull out the nodes, or the anchor points rather, and reposition them. And I'm going to do this all the way around the flower.
And after a little time, you'll end up with a nice line that's all the way around your flower with the nice curves. And let's zoom out. And then what we're going to do with that line is we are going to, by grabbing, grabbing any one of the pen tools, we can then right click and make selection. I'm just going to click OK. You can see now that we've, we've made a selection out of that line. So now we've got a nice outline around our flower. So we are now literally going to press Command Shift I and we're going to invert the selection and we're going to press Delete. And I'm going to press Command D to deselect. And there we have it. We've got our flower nicely cut out with some nice smooth lines around each petal. And after all that, the fun part can begin. So next, we're, with our image cut out, once we're happy with that, we're going to come to Image, Mode, and Grayscale. And we're, we're not going to flatten this one just yet. So we're going to make a grayscale. And then we're going to bring up the le levels. We can either go to Image Adjustments Levels, but I like to use the shortcut. So I'm going to press Command L. And we're just going to toggle the the properties of this image just to really push up the the contrast so let's have a little play with this just to tweak tweak the left and right notes here um, just going to try and find something I'm happy with uh, let's go with that so what we're aiming to do is just push up the contrast because what we're going to do next is we're going to use a filter which is one of Photoshop's filters and um, we've got to come up to filter and we're going to come down to Sketch, and we're going to scroll down and click on Stamp. So we're going to use the Stamp filter, and then shortly a Properties window will open, and we'll be able to toggle the properties of this filter here to the right. And I'm going to start with tweaking the light and dark balance. So I'm going to push this up to around mid-40s. Let's see how this looks. Let's try... We're going to try around 43, and let's just toggle the smoothness. I'll just push that up a little bit. Yeah, let's go with 8. Okay. And that's looking pretty good. Now let me pull down my Layers panel here, and we can see that now we've got this nice black image on the white. But the problem we have is, if I want the flexibility to change all, the, all what we see is black here to say yellow, then how are we going to do that? Like, for example, if I double click on the layer and I go to Color Overlay, you can see that no matter what color I use, it's going to just create a silhouette of the, of the flower there. But I don't want that. I want to just select everything that's black. So I need to find a way to select all the white within this black flower and just get rid of it. Lucky for me, there's a cool tool that does that. So we're going to come to Select, Color Range, and we're going to... Just move this over to the side and we're going to use the color picker to select which color. And the color range to select, if I select this white, then it's and click OK, it's going to select everything that is white within this layer. And if I press delete and command D to deselect, if I come back to my layer again and double click, and this time come to color overlay, we can see now that we can change this to whatever we want, whatever color we want. And we have simply, by using the color range, we simply deleted all the white from within that flower. And now it's time to move on. But before we do that, I'm going to come to Image, Mode, and change it now to RGB, because it was currently in grayscale, and we do not want to flatten this. And I'm going to come over to my Layers panel and click on the background, I'm just going to create a new layer. I'm going to press Command Shift N. OK. And I'm going to come over to my menu and select a black. And I'm going to come to my paint bucket. I'm just going to fill that layer and make it all black. And then I'm going to come back to my flower layer. I'm going to make sure that the effects are on. And you can see that it's grey from what we set it to before. But I'm going to double click. I'm going to come to my color overlay. And I'm going to select a red, a slightly darker tint of red. And that's how simple it is to create this effect. So we've got our two layers here. And now it's time to create our stroke or our brush strokes on top. I'm going to start by creating a new layer. 
Command Shift N. Click OK. And then we're going to come to our brush, or we could just press B on the keyboard, shortcut for the brush. And we're going to need a brush size that's around 12 pixels. And I'm going to change the, the color from black to white. And I'm going to zoom, zoom in, pressing B. I'm just going to start to draw on top of my flower. I think it's important at this stage to mention that I am actually using a pen tablet. After all, we are trying to achieve an effect that is hand-drawn. Um, I wouldn't suggest, you could try using your mouse, but I'm using a pen tablet. I think I'm going to find it a lot easier to do this using a pen tablet. And I'm just going to carry on drawing some detail in the center of the flower here. And once I'm happy with that, I can zoom out a little and take a look at that. And I'm actually going to start on the petals now. And what we can do is as we move around the flower, we can toggle the brush stroke just ever so slightly by using the buttons on the keyboard or coming up to change it manually. So hopefully you'll end up with something that looks a little bit like this. So let's review our stroke lines here. And we can see that we've got quite a few arrows going on in here. Um, I'm not that great at using the pen tablet. So I'm going to press E to pull up my eraser tool. I'm going to select a nice solid brush and pull the size down a little. And I'm just going to come ahead and just delete some of my sloppiness. I'm going to quickly get rid of this. And once we're happy with our stroke, our brush strokes on the top, let's come back to our layers panel. We can see now we've got our strokes layer all on one layer there. What we're going to do now is we're going to apply a gradient overlay to this stroke to capture that effect that Andy Warhol would use. So let's double click on this layer here. I'm going to come to gradient overlay. And we can see that it's already cast a black to white overlay. But I'm going to click on the the um, black to white gradient there. And this will bring up our gradient editor. And here I have my gradient editor bar. I'm just going to click in the middle. And I'm going to introduce a new color. So I'm going to start from left to right. And I'm going to click on my black slider here. And I'm going to choose a new color. And I'm going to try and find a light purple or a purple color. Let's go with that for now. And then I'm going to keep the middle uh, selector white. And I'm going to select on my far right and select color. And I'm going to come and find a dark green. OK. And what we can do here is we can refine the gradient even more by clicking on our colors and just refining them and tweaking them a little. Okay, and then I can even change, go ahead and change the angle slightly, and we can change the scale. And that is looking, that is looking quite interesting. And there we have it. There is our red flower. So now I'm going to come to my layers panel. I'm just going to click on the top stroke layer there we just created. I'm going to press shift. I'm going to select on our black layer, the third one, and I'm going to press Command G, and that's going to group this red flower. I'm just going to double click on rename this red flower. 
Now, what if I wanted to change the flower, all the colors? As I said at the beginning of the tutorial, I was also going to show you how easy it would be to, to manage these layers and change them. So I'm going to right click and duplicate the group. And this time I'm going to call this white flower. Okay, I'm just going to toggle the visibility of the one underneath and let's bring, drop down this folder. And, you know, I can double click on the, the flower here and come to color overlay and I can simply change this from red to white. And I'm going to, and I could come to my background layer and let's try and find a nice blue, blue color here. And let's use the paint bucket to fill this. And let's come to our stroke and double click that. And we can change our gradient colors. Let's change this to a let's change this to a dark blue. And let's go with a yellow, a golden yellow here. Okay, and let's try a let's try a reddish colour. Okay, or pinky pinky red. I'll do. And let's change the angle slightly. <clears throat> And as you can see, it's very, very easy to to change the the colors here. And I might even want to add a bit more a bit more detail to my stroke layer here, if I wish. And doing this, the gradient will just follow on on top of it. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier is what we should do is once we've drawn our stroke, we can use the arrow keys on the keyboard <clears throat> and just move, move our stroke slightly off kilter. Because what was quite charming about Andy Warhol's artwork is that when he would draw all his lines, he, it wouldn't it wouldn't exactly be on top. It was slightly it, because he used a screen printing process. It was slightly off kilter, so that added a certain charm to his work. So we're just going to again try and emulate that by moving the strokes offline. Now, before I move on to the final part of this tutorial and quickly do the poster, I'm just going to change and make another color version again just to show how simple it is so i'm going to come to my layers panel i'm going to duplicate this group okay but this time i'm going to call this black because we're going to make a black flower this time double click on my flower color overlay change it from white to black okay and we're going to go for we're going to choose my background layer and i'm going to click the color picker and I'm going to choose a dark red and fill that in and I'm going to keep I'm going to keep my stroke colors as they are and how long did that take what a matter of seconds and there we go now we have a black flower a white flower and a red flower so let's go ahead and create our poster now to do this we're going to make a new canvas and we're going to make it 4 by 3. Now, since we have a square image, 30 by 30, we're going to need a canvas, which is 120 by 90. So I'm going to come to New, File New, and I'm going to create a canvas of 120 by 90. OK. Now, I want to show you a really cool trick. I'm going to create a grid, which is going to make it really easy for me to position my flowers on. So I'm going to come to view and show grid. Now I'm going to change the properties of this grid very easily by coming up to Photoshop, preferences and I'm going to come to guides and grids and I'm going to focus particularly on the grid section here and I'm going to create a guideline every 30 centimeters and I'm going to do subdivisions of four. Okay and here we have our squares. So I'm going to come to the flower I just created, just click on the the group and just drag this into my poster here. And if you have snap snap to guides here, that's going to make it really easy to position um, accurately where I want these on the canvas. So I'm just going to mix this up and I'm going to put this one down here. 
I'm going to come back to my flower I just created, but this time I'm going to select my white flower, and by selecting on the folder, I'm going to again drag this into my poster comp. Um, where would I want? Where should I put this? I'll put this one here, and again back into my artwork here. And I'm going to select my black flower, drag this in, and I'm going to drop it. Let's position that one here. And now we've got a couple of examples in our poster. We can easily duplicate these and change the hue saturation. This is going to make it really easy to change the colors pretty quickly. So let's try that. Let's start with the red flower. I'm going to press Alt on my keyboard and I'm going to click and drag up into the top left hand corner here. And that was a quick, that was the tool for quick copy. But I've got a folder. I don't need that anymore. So if I come over to my Lays panel, make sure I've got my red flower here. I'm going to press Command E and that's going to flatten. It's going to flatten that group into a single layer. And if I press Command U, that's going to pull up my hue saturation. If I toggle the hue left and right, all we can do is just we can see which color we want to go with. So let's try and go with the blue. And there you go. Very, very easy. Let's try that with the white flower. So I'm going to press Alt and click and drag that one just down below here. And again, Command E to flatten that group into a single layer. Command U. And let's toggle the hue of this. Let's have a look. Let's try something like that. And we could even change the hue of the saturation point rather. Push it up or pull it down. That looked okay to start with. Okay. And maybe we can try the black flower. Holding Alt, click and drag. Let's drag that into the bottom corner. And again, Command E to flatten the layer group into a single object. So I can press Command U for hue saturation, and we can pull this one. That's looking pretty funky. Okay. And we're going to need a little bit more variation. So I'm going to come back to my some examples I've made previously. And I've got a nice pink and yellow example here. To change those colors, I used all the same techniques I showed you previously in the tutorial. So I'm just going to right click and grab the pink flower and drag this into my poster. And it's a little bit smaller than I want, but that's not a problem. I can just press Command T, free transform, and just stretch it a little bit. And that'll, that's looking quite nice. And again, I'm going to press Command E to flatten that group into a single object. And by pressing V, pull up my uh, selection tool and hit and press Alt on my keyboard. And I can drag this, drag this down into position and command U to change again the hue saturation. And I can do this for I can just keep doing this until I find or complete my my poster. And after a few more copy and pastes and changing the hue saturation, you will finish your grid and you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. Now I'm just going to go to view and show grid to turn that off. And here we have our full poster effect in Adobe Photoshop. And that, my friends, is one way how you can emulate Andy Warhol style in Photoshop. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. If you did, go ahead and subscribe to the channel now. There'll be lots more videos like this coming soon. And if you're interested, go over to my website at tastytutes.com where you can see uh, more videos just like this one there. And from there, you can follow me on Twitter where I'll be talking about various other creative topics and also Facebook. So have fun, guys, and I'll see you next time.